market. So the Bitcoin or the crypto market is watching the stock market. The stock market is watching the Fed and the Fed is watching inflation. So for the last 20 or 30 years, uh, the Fed has been sitting on the Pandora box, making sure that the box doesn't open and that the, that the three uh, uh, headed monster, the dragon of inflation escapes the Pandora box. But now it escaped. The, the, the dragon is out there spewing fire in every market and the Fed needs to slay the dragon, right? That's the only thing the Fed chairman is focused on. Doesn't matter if the uh, stock market house is on fire or the bond market house is on fire or the crypto house is on fire. So the Fed chairman already managed to slay one head. We went from 8.5 print on inflation to 8.3. That was two weeks ago. We need to see two more prints. So we need to, to cut two more heads of this uh, uh, dragon. And then we can put it, uh, we can kill it and put it back in the Pandora box and sit on it tightly. So yeah. when that happens, uh, when that print comes through, the Fed can then uh, pivot and look at the markets, look at what they need to do to calm the markets. Uh, and they will do that, but they're not going to do it before they know right. that inflation is under control. And when the Fed speaks, the public markets listen. And when the public markets listen, the crypto markets follow. We're going to come back but to the Fed. Just remember, yes. remember when when Bitcoin recovers, it usually recovers five to eight X of where it was or even more uh, where the stock market will only go up or whatever, 30, 50, 70 percent. So so the rebound it's a coil spring, right? The rebound on crypto is always stronger and it always represents new higher highs and new higher lows. Well, Alex, whether or not inflation is tamed by the dragon slayer known as the Fed is uh, still to be debated and we'll come back to that. But what's not disputable is that Bitcoin has not been progressing uh, with inflation in the sense that the price has not caught up with this year's CPI and PCE prints. Uh, people are wondering, Alex, why hasn't Bitcoin been performing as an inflation hedge? How would you respond to that? Yeah, so you have to zoom out, right? When you look at, uh, if you take 10 years horizon and you compare the S&P versus inflation versus Bitcoin, uh, it outperformed uh, both of them. And uh, basically, if you measure them against Bitcoin, you will see that both of them basically, uh, like the S&P lost 99% of its value in a decade compared to yeah. Bitcoin. So, so it's just a question, are you looking at a week, a month, a year or a decade? So PCE, core PCE came out today. Uh, this is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. This is the this is the measure they use to actually make policy decisions with. Core PC came out at 4.9%, which is slightly lower than the month before, but still in line with estimates, consensus estimates. The Fed probably is looking at this and wondering, like you rightly pointed out before, that inflation is probably being tamed right now. I mean, 4.9% is still high, 8.1% CPI is still high, but perhaps this is the peak, Alex. What do you think? I do think that we hit uh, peak inflation. Again, we had to adjust uh, to the war in, uh, between Russia and the Ukraine. We had to adjust to this complete shutdown in, in China. Uh, and it takes time for the US economy to refactor, re uh, recreate the supply chain. It's not happening overnight. Uh, but it's all of that is already in the works. All of that is already happening. And, and uh, I think uh, the US always springs out of these things first and it springs out of it uh, faster and stronger. And like Warren Buffett says, do not bet against the US economy. So I think uh, uh, we are seeing a, a correction here. We are seeing a pivot. Uh, everybody has to adjust how they do business. What do they do? Uh, risk is off, capital uh, costs are higher. Uh, all these things uh, represent, again, uh, an opportunity for the best companies to excel and for the companies that did not have a good business model, that were all just uh, living off free money uh, to have to make major adjustments. Okay. Is your view then that perhaps the Fed will ease back on its tightening measures this year, which could potentially bring in more capital to risk assets like cryptos? I think the Fed will basically when they tame inflation will announce that they don't need eight hikes that uh, they might be loosening up on the quantitative tightening so they're gonna they're not gonna go back to qe 
but they're gonna do less QT, right? And, and all these things are very, very strong uh, indicators to the markets uh, that the Fed is not gonna stand in their way, right? What, what, what the markets don't wanna do is fight the Fed. And, and right now the Fed is in charge. You know, they have, the, they have the sword and they're focused on the dragon. And anyone else who thinks, oh, you know, come help me, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm the NASDAQ and I'm down 31%. The Fed could care less about the NASDAQ. Doesn't care if the NASDAQ goes down 40%, right? So, so inflation could uh, basically hurt the entire U.S. economy, could hurt the largest economy in the world and can hurt the U.S. dollar. And those are the things that it's focused on. And uh, on the other side of this, on the other side of the coin is, is the labor market. So we are seeing uh, definitely still tight condition in the labor market. So you need to see both of those relax and then the Fed will be much more accommodating. Okay. I'm sensing then you're saying that Bitcoin's ultimate uh, <laughs> future and the rest of the cryptocurrencies as well basically rests on inflation. So um, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I think what you're trying to say is that if inflation doesn't come down, the Fed will be forced to continue its tightening measures and that will restrict capital flows into risk assets. Uh, yeah, on the it, other hand, it, if it eases up, then yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the all the Fed is doing is delaying uh, Bitcoin going to new all-time highs, right? So I even see. with all of this action, inflation and everything else, uh, you have a long-term trend. The long-term trend is migration from centralization to decentralization from web two to web three and a lot of that migration involves cryptocurrencies right so so no matter what happens it doesn't matter even if there is inflation all that does is just delays the inevitable which is a, a mass adoption of cryptocurrencies across the entire planet and and so the, the question is just when are those all-time highs coming are they coming this year the next year or, or three years from now so if you're a hodler, again, if you're a Celsius customer and you're just hodling for many years, that doesn't impact you, right? The opposite, you're getting another opportunity to buy Bitcoin at lower prices, right? Because you're averaging in, you, you, you're accumulating Bitcoin over time or Ethereum over time, and you're getting an opportunity to buy something at 30,000 instead of a 60,000. So uh, crypto holders are not looking, again, again the, the hodlers are not looking at this as oh my god we're not going to hit our plans and we were about to sell all of our coins uh, they were not planning on any of that anyway right they're huddling so so i don't see change in behavior in the celsius community i don't see change in behavior with the other whales that uh, we work with yeah. uh, or institutional uh, adoption uh, it's just a question of are we delayed by a year or two from the mass adoption curve that we were talking about it is interesting how cryptos are responding this time around, because if you recall back in uh, 2015 was the last time the Fed raised rates. I'm, look I'm just looking at the federal funds rate, the effective Fed funds rate. And they were raising rates from 2015, the end of 2015, all the way up to 2019. And then they and then they went back down to zero. Uh, during that time, of course, uh, Bitcoin had a very remarkable rally to the highs of 2017 before it came back down. So I'm just saying that it didn't coincide with the Fed funds rate. The Fed funds rate were was going up, but Bitcoin was also going up at the time. So clearly now something must be different because, uh, you know, the argument that uh, the Fed is causing the Bitcoin sell off. Well, maybe it is, but I'm just saying last time that doesn't seem to be the case, right? Yeah. So we, during that entire period, we were still risk on, we were not risk off. Okay. Right? So the big difference is that uh, right now we are risk off because of the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though the Fed was raising rates, we did not have 8% uh, percent inflation, right? So, so everybody's concern is, uh, is it transitory? Is it under control? Can we slay the dragon? Can we put it back in the box and not have inflation for a decade or two? Or is it something where we constantly have to fight the dragon? It's constantly going to jump out. We're going to have to fight it every few years, which obviously changes dramatically uh, both the risk on risk off uh, parameters, but also what the Fed is focused on. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.